Now, this bloke who we're about to speak to, Brian, uh, from the very start of our program, this is our third year going, we just liked the cut of his jib, didn't we? There was something about this bloke who resonated with us and our listener. Yep. Um, just a knockabout sort of bloke, very relatable, very likeable. And in the Daily Telegraph, Phil Rothfield wrote this. South Sydney Rabbitohs forward Liam Knight reveals his battle with drugs and binge drinking. Liam Knight has taken the brave step to talk openly about his battles and he had an open tell-all with Phil Rothfield. The South Sydney Rabbitohs have belted the Dragons for the Charity Shield just a few weeks out from the 2023 National Rugby League season. This is buzz writing this. Your mm. first impression of an NRL front row war horse can be misleading. On television and from the stands, we see gladiators, rough, tough and indestructible. That's why the story of South City Rabbitoh star Liam Knight is an important one. He might play in the engine room, the world's toughest collision sport, but he's as vulnerable as anyone to the perils of mental health. Last year, the 27-year-old forward had his season cut short by an illegal tackle that ruptured his ACL and MCL in his knee. South Sydney star Liam Knight has opened up about his alcohol addiction. Uh, He turned to binge drinking and prescription drugs, anything to escape the pain of two bouts of surgery, the gloom, the depression, and the dark thoughts. And it goes on. Knight emerged from 28 days in a drug, alcohol, and gambling rehab centre late last year, and he still goes to Alcoholic Anonymous two nights a week and hasn't touched a drop since. Phil Rothfield writes a terrific article in the Daily Telegraph and I'm pleased to say that this fellow here would probably have, well, he may do, the impact he can have on people listening who may be going through the same for how brave he's been to share his story. Liam Knight's on the line. G'day, Liam. Hey, boys. How are we? Congratulations, mate. Um, we are in a world where on social media people like to sell us a perfect life, a perfect world. It's not the case. And, mate, you doing what you've done and being so humble, open and honest about it, I think is massive for a lot of people out there in the community. Uh, Take us through your journey. Uh, Thanks, mate. It's been a bit of a weird week or two since that article hit for me internally. Um, Since my little journey, Mm. um, from the start or from the after the rehab, where are we going? Well, well, let's just go this week. Like, you know, this has been quite a private matter. And then all of a sudden, you know, it comes to the surface and – I, I I love this. I I love when people just make things human because we are human. It doesn't matter what anyone does. And you've climbed the heights of playing National Rugby League and uh, and being terrific at it. Um, but you've come out openly about this, and I know it'll have a great impact on people. But um, take us through the decision to go public with it. Yeah, I think um, I sort of thought about it when I was in – rehab a bit like uh, you know I was struggling so much and a couple of weeks in I started feeling better I just you know actually talking talking to strangers you know people talking around in a circle pretty much like opening up about some things and tears and you know just random people just trying to do their best trying to get better and, and um, change their lives and I sort of like you know I sort of I've got a bit of a if I can get out of this you know if I can sort my life out sort my shit out mm-hmm. I, hopefully maybe one day I can just share a bit of my story and, and make it okay for someone else to talk to someone instead of, you know, internalizing and spiraling like I did. I, I don't know. It was like a bit of a light bulb. Maybe if I can help one person it'll make me feel better and maybe they can help someone and we can just, just drop the stigma around, um, you know, men are too, men are tough. We don't talk about our feelings. So Nighty with, um, alcoholism, I've had a, a few friends of mine going, going into, um, uh, alcohols anonymous and they were just binge drinkers. So they didn't drink every day. No. So when you go yeah. in, go in there, is that is that considered you're you're you've got alcoholism even if you're not drinking every day? Like what what do they say about binge drinking? Yeah, that's what they say. Like it's more the uncontrollable urge to continue to con- like to drink until you black out, or you know if you're you know you obviously see a mate that's that guy that you can't really have one, which is pretty like that's me. You know I, I don't want to have one. It's like I'm having a hundred. I'm gonna have why would I have a beer? What's yeah. the point of that? I want to get just like disgraceful, or I want yeah. to be. I was sit, sit still, you know. So that's probably me. Like I was, I don't drink every day. That was my biggest thing around it. Like, well, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm sweet. Yeah. No, I don't drink every day. That's that's for them. That's not me. And then, mm. you know, like, and and it's also like the next day and the, the head noise around it. And I don't know. It just all like it all made sense, and then sort of um, stuck with me from, personally. So, Nighty, was it? Did you see this brewing? Like, could you, or is this the way you've always? partied or ever since like when you turned 18 we were always a binge drink because I mean when you're playing footy you can only really get on the drink after a game but 
do you think it was like ten years of this that led to it, or do you think you would you were drinking for for a reason? No, I think I started drinking really young. I think I was twelve when I first got blind. You know, like oh, yeah. um, certain circumstances in my life. You know, it's a bit public. Strange things going on when I was younger. No one was really there to tell me, mm. you know, no. And I was a lot of times myself with, with random people. And from then, like I liked that feeling, and I was a pretty, um, pretty sad, lonely kid at one stage. And you know? I, I got that feeling then. I, I don't, I don't know when it all started, but when I started getting a bit older, you know, 14, 15, really old at this stage, you know, really seasoned drinker, it just sort of got on from there. It was always really fun. Like obviously, I, I love a good time, and it was always like that. And then after the injury, it sort of just stopped becoming fun, and it was more of like a coping mechanism to just numb the feeling of. I don't know what, you know, sadness and, and pain and, and everything that came around, not being able to play and the, and the way I was, in, I was injured and, and just sort of cut short. Yeah. Hey, Liam, and, and feel free not to share this if you don't wish to, but clearly for yourself to go through the rehab and the Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a moment where, you know, you've obviously been through this battle time and time again, but for whatever reason, this time around something happened or something mm. you're made to felt you know, feel a certain way and you thought, okay, now nah, I, I need to take action now. Can you, if you're open to, would you like to take us through that particular moment? Mm, yeah, uh, that's a hard one to talk about. But mm. I, you know, I'll, I'll never ever consider like committing suicide. But there was a point in my life at that time where I was like, fuck, I just don't want to do it anymore. You know, it was like. I never plan. I wasn't planning it or anything. I just like it was thoughts coming up about fuck. I'm just sick of it. No, I'm mm. sick of life. That's where I was at for a little bit. Yeah. And then those thoughts came through, and I went, whoa, whoa, that's not me. I need, I need help. You know, and I, that's yeah. when I, then things were going in, getting. In, I started putting things in place with a lot of help and a lot of uh, amazing people behind the scenes. Hey Liam, I know that was going to be an uncomfortable answer, and I'm so glad you shared that because I reckon there's a stack of people mm. uh, who would listen to the program who may have been down the same path or may feel like they're going through the same thing. So I really appreciate you sharing that. No, that's right, mate. Thanks. So, Nighty, how are you feeling now? Obviously, you were a lot, you're a lot clearer. Obviously, for for not for not drinking and stuff. But what have you found out about yourself? Um. Yeah. Look, I don't. I start, I was start, when I finished rehab, so it's been what it's almost five months now for me, not a job. Mm. My life's clean. Like I don't have a worry about what I've done on the weekend. Everything I, I've done, I know what I've done. You know, I, yeah. I walk around. I'm not hiding anything from anyone, which is a nice feeling. I mm. speak openly when I want to speak, when I feel like it. Uh, figured out, like you know, mainly just the, the coping mechanisms and the triggers for me. I'm still figuring that out, like why I was doing it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But now I've just like other interests in life. You know, I just. I think the biggest problem for me was football was 95% of my life and I didn't want anything else in part of it because I just felt like it took away from what it was for me, which was like, you know, special thing, special world I lived in and I didn't want anything else because I didn't want, like I didn't need it. Yeah. And then when football stopped, you know, and then I had nothing else, I was like, what am I doing in life? Like without this, I'm not, like, I didn't feel like I was nothing, you know, no one, nothing was going on. Um, so that's what, like I'm sober all the time now, I wake up in the mornings and I look for other things I want to do. I you know, just sort of like trying to build my life around it. Yeah. No, I I think, see, and it's hard when you're in that bubble, right? So you're you're, you're a rugby league player. I mean, you're only a baby. You're 20, 27 years of age. If I could say anything to you, Nighty, is that rugby league is such a small part of your life. Like, it, and when you're involved in it, you just think, oh, it's the be all and end all. But when you get to 30, 35, yeah. and you realize, oh, it was a great time in my life. Don't get me wrong, but. It's such a small part of your life, rugby league. And that's, I'm glad you said that because now you're like the way you're speaking, it's going, oh, well, I need other interests. And I reckon a, a lot of rugby league players should have another interest outside of, of footy. I know it is a, a pressure game and, and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, it, it is only a game. But you, when you're stuck in that middle of it and you're thinking, oh, there's nothing else. But yeah. um, now, yeah. oh, I, do you know what I mean? hundred percent, hundred percent, mate. I remember, like, people, you know, everyone tells you, sure, football's short. You're like, yeah, I know, you know it's short. You know what it yeah. is. Like, just, yeah. Nah, shush, shush. I'm doing this. This is what I do. This is the story you tell yourself, you know. Like, if I, I start, like, oh, if I look at other things, maybe that takes away from what I'm doing here, you know, which is always what I wanted to do. And it's so special to me, you know, like, nah, nah, I'll, I'll do that when I need to. And then when, it, you know, when these things happen, like, a big injury or the moments that yeah. happened to me, like, I just, then I just, I just sort of crumbled and I wasn't really there mentally ready. 
obviously not really ready, but yeah, I had nothing in place. Hey, Liam, uh, the board has lit up. We are chatting to Liam Knight from the Rabbitohs, uh, the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Now, Liam, uh, when we go to the NRL website, it says uh, the knee is the issue and the casualty ward indefinite. Uh, how's it all coming along for you? I feel awesome, hey, to be yeah. honest, mate. Uh, I'm probably six, seven weeks away, hopefully six, five or six, but probably five to eight, somewhere in the middle there, hopefully. Uh, I feel really good, feel fit, mate. Um, training's, training's picking up. I'm just sort of in the middle of my little preseason, my personal preseason now, so I should be humming along nicely. Are you around the boys, mate? Do you get to. I know you would be in the rehab group, which is a punish. I know, but do you, do you get to do you get to go around and 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 catch up with the boys like on the field and stuff? I've just been given like the all clear. I started doing like the warm up with the boys like maybe a week ago, which is like you know just take the small wins. Yeah, and uh, the passing stuff, the warm up passing at the start, just a bit of connection, which is this building. And then this week, a bit hard this week because we got a short turnaround, so there's not much training going on. But next week, I'll, I'll sort of jump back in and, and get amongst a bit of skills in and out, you know, in and with the boys, get fogged on the sideline, jump back in and, and see how we see how fast I can get back into the swing of things. Hey, Liam, can you make us a promise? Uh, Fletch has been waxing lyrically all off-season. I've got a gut feel, boys. I think it's South taken on the Roosters. It's never happened in the history of well, the game. Well, it has. It's happened twice. Has it? 1935. Right. And the other one was just first past the post. Right. So they <laughs> – but that, it has happened. Okay. But 1935. Right. I mean, okay. I think Buzz was just 18. So. <laughs> oh, right, eh? um, Now, Liam, can you promise us this, right? So sport – as a fascinating way of rewarding people who, you know, who, who stick to the task, get off the canvas and away they go. If it's grand final week and South Sydney are off to the big dance, as people like to call it, Liam Knight's in the 17. Can we get you on the show? Yeah, mate, 100%. Mm. Book me in. Yeah. I've got a feeling <laughs> book, that's going to happen, Brian. Book, book me in. I've got a feeling that's going to come true, to be honest. Yeah. Hey, um, Knighty, can I ask you about your halfback? Um, you know, less than 12 months ago, he got – you, you blokes got pumped by by the Dragons down there and he got hooked at half time. Which yeah. at the time I didn't agree with Jason Dimitri. I, I just thought, you know, he's a kid, it's going to affect him. But mm. ever since that day, he's improved and especially getting into that semi into the semifinals. That game on the weekend was the best I've I've seen him play. Did you know that this kid was that good? I Never doubted him, honestly. Like, if I'm, I'm not even saying that because he's going well now. All last year, everyone's, you know, everyone's, oh, you know, you know, nothing without Reno and, and all this stuff. And obviously, Adam Reynolds is one of the, you know, he's a great halfback, one of the best, probably one of the best South halfback in history. And he'll be, you know, one of the great halfbacks, I feel. But I never doubted him. He's a, he's an absolute weapon. Like, not even on the field. He's a, he's a full round human being. Like, he's a great bloke. He's a good kid. He wants to work hard and he's got a great attitude. Big sexy frame on him, like <laughs> he's a gun, mate. He's like, yeah. I always knew he was gonna be a gun, and like, I was like, you need a bit of time, and you know, you're looking there that seven weeks to gel with Cody, and then you saw after that, they we just the whole team sort of started coming together, and then this, oh, he's played that well on the weekend, mate. I'll say that before him. Do you reckon he's got a bit of Baldwin about him, like a Stephen Baldwin? Mm. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know if you know Stephen, Stephen Baldwin. <sighs> he's in, he's in, um, Usual Suspects. If you have a look, nah, I got Alec Baldwin coming up tomorrow. I'll, look, yeah. I'll have a look at him. Yeah, 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 Alec, yeah, yeah. Have a look at Stephen Baldwin and then put them side by side. You've seen, you've seen Usual Suspects, surely, Nighty. Oh, I don't think I have, mate. Oh, I don't man. think I have. Hey, how's your? What? What's the uh, home life like? Um, who are you living with at the moment? You're not with uh, T. Rudolph, are you? Nah, I've been <laughs> out. I've been out of um out of that mess for a while. With T. Rudolph <laughs> and out of, um, <laughs> we've. We had an amicable split, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's complicated, but we're still friends. <laughs> yeah. Who took Who took the kids? It's not your fault, it's mine. Who's uh, got the kids? I think, yeah, I, I got the kids. Yeah, yeah. The kids. <laughs> but yeah, you're we're still on talking away. terms. Yeah, we're still on talking terms. We share custody if we need to. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. That is. Now we're actually starting a podcast, me and Toby. You might have to come on, Fletch. Oh yeah, mate. Count me in. I'll be your first guest, definitely. I, mate, yes, that's a great that, start. That would be a good threesome. Yeah, look forward to <laughs> Yes, that would be a juicy no, no drink. <laughs> no, yeah, no drinking. Definitely. Nah, no drinking. No drinking. We'll get some, we'll get some kombucha sorted or something. Oh, yeah. But I'm living with Jai now. I'm still li- I've been living with Jai for about a year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Well, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you just cut out, mate. Uh, yeah, I'll check the calendar. Thanks for asking. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, you come too, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go the roosters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, I was going to ask. I was going to ask you, Nighty, when when you first reached out to to the club. Yeah. Was it? Were you nervous about doing it? Oh, mate, I was shitting myself. Yeah. For a couple of things, like obviously I knew I was fucked at the time. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I'm going to swear. Yeah. Nah, you're not, but no, no, you're not. not. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was in some dramas mentally, but then I had to go and front up. And then, like, I don't know if the club knew or what they knew. Like, obviously, I thought I was hiding stuff pretty well, but mm. I don't know. I had to obviously pretty much admit to what I, I was, you know, in a bad way through all this stuff. So that was a hard part. And then also just opening up and, and asking for help. I just thought, like, mate, I He's going to look at me like I'm a, like whatever I was going to be, you know, look down at me or whatever. So it was just a big ego hit. And, um, yeah, pretty much just – I was almost shaking before I met, it, met up with Jace. And yeah. um, I, I probably looked scraggly. Like, I wasn't in the best place. Like, I was looking like shit. And, uh, I don't know how he thought I was looking, but I, I felt awful. Yeah. And was it just like a weight off your shoulders, like once once it's out now? Because – Yeah, I was just waiting for the judgment. Like, yeah. I was waiting for him to judge me. Because I was, I was judging me, you know, that's probably yeah. the biggest thing. I was judging me more than anyone else was judging. And then as soon as I said it, he goes, man, I'm really proud of you. Like, yeah. We'll give you all the help you need. Like, 100%. And I, and I went, what? It was 100%. like a what? Like, in my, internally, I, I was like a what? Yeah. Um, just that one sentence. And then as soon as I said it, he's like, man, it's awesome. Man, we'll help you with everything you need. And I'm proud of you for getting, you know, getting things sorted. And I'm, waiting. And I'm, I'm just sort of like, he's still talking. I'm tuned out. I just couldn't believe what he was saying. Yeah. And have you, have you been asked by the NRL – to do any talks or anything like that, or any companies come have come out to you and and, and asking you to speak to people? No, 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 no one's asked me. I'd be happy to do it. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't know how to go about it, but um, yeah, I'd be happy to do it. I, I reckon so. Dan Hunt, uh, he's involved in the the mental side of things. I, I reckon. Aston. Yes, I mean you'd be perfect because you can speak. I mean, for a front rower, you can speak pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just put me in that category. I'm good for that category, you know. What about your tennis? I know you were a prodigy as a kid. Are you still playing tennis? I haven't played for a while because of that, you know, a couple – Your knees. Yeah, a probably. couple – cut a few surgeries on the knee. But before that, yeah, I still swing a racket every yeah. now and again. I love it. I love it when I can, when I can do it. I'll, uh, I'll definitely get amongst it. I love it. And do you watch it? Like, are you are you getting around, like, Wimbledon and stuff like that? Yeah, I went to the Aussie Open this year. Um, went for three days, I think it was. Snuck that in between some training days, and, and that was a nice little time down in Melbourne. And uh, yeah, we, I, I don't really watch the French because the French on it, you know, well, I don't know, midnight onwards. So that's not really my game. But not anymore. Wimbledon, anyway. I'll be, not I'll anymore. be, <laughs> not anymore, mate. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be keen for Wimbledon. Hey Liam, we appreciate your time here on the run home with Joel and yeah, Fletch. Liam you, Knight, Knight. Uh, very, very brave in what you've done, and I'll be using. We're actually calling the game Fletch. Yep. On Thursday night, South State on Penrith. Yes. And if I don't say big sexy frame when the halfback gets the ball, <laughs> oh yes, I, I'm going to hook or, myself. Or Stephen Baldwin. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> it. <laughs>